We're going to talk in this video about how to solve linear inequalities. Before we really talk about the solution or how to do that, I want to remind you about interval set builder notation and how to graph a solution set. Now remember that when we are looking at interval notation, interval notation is just basically two numbers in between parentheses or brackets, or we could have a number with infinity. And so in this example right here, this says that the solution set would be between A and B, and we do not include the endpoints because, the, um, because of the parentheses that are included on the notation. Now what that says to us in set builder notation is that my variable x, the solution for my variable x, is x has to be between A and B. It cannot include A and B because we can see the inequality symbol right here is not inclusive. So the set builder notation is always given with brackets, like uh, set brackets, and it reads as x such that, that's what that bar means, x such that x is greater than A but less than B. And that's what the interval notation states here, that my variable x is greater than a but less than b. In other words, it's in between my a and my b, but it does not include a and b. And then over here you can see that the graph uh, represents that as well. The nice thing about interval notation and the graph is if you'll graph the solution set, it will pretty, or yeah, graph the solution, it will pretty much give you the interval notation that you need. Now remember that um, whenever we have infinity for a solution, uh, part of our uh, set, then it always will have a parentheses around it because we never really get to the end of infinity. So having said that, let's jump into how we solve our linear inequalities. And when we do that, we're going to give our um, solution in its interval notation as well as a graph. So here we have the equation 18x plus 45 is less than or equal to 12x minus 8. And in order to solve that, it's just like regular equations. We want to get all of the variables on the same side, and we want the constants on the opposite side. So I'm going to subtract 12x to the left-hand side over here, and I get 6x plus 45 is less than or equal to 8, negative 8. Whoops, negative 8. Now let's subtract 45 to the right-hand side, and we have 6x is less than negative 53. We want to get the variable x all by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by a positive 6. This gives me the solution that says x is less than or equal to negative 53 over 6, and I'm going to leave this in the exact answer or as a reduced fraction, which this is reduced. Now, when you solve linear inequalities, it's exactly the same as solving linear equations. The only change is if I divide by a, at this point, if I divide by a negative number. If I were to have divided by a negative number, I would flip the sign. So that's the only thing that you have to watch out for. Okay, so now that we have a solution here, let's go graph this. This says, that I'm looking for solutions for the variable x that are less than or equal to negative 53 over 6. Always start by reading with your variable first. So the only number I'm really interested in is negative 53 over 6, and I know that I want values that are less than, so they would be less than, oops, I'll draw it right in just a second. Okay, so I want values that are less then 53 over, negative 53 over 6, and because this is a less than or equal to, I'm looking for a bracket. Now, to write the solution in interval notation, since this goes off to negative infinity, it would look like negative infinity comma negative 53 over 6 bracket. And that is the two parts to the solution that I'm looking for, the graph as well as the interval notation. Now, real quickly, let me show you what this is actually meaning. If I were to go over here to this graph, so here I have graphed for you um, the, the solution. What I have is over here, 
in the top, the line uh, y1 is given by the left side of my inequality, which is the line 18x plus 45. Okay, that's this red line that I have right here, my pointer's pointing at. The green line is the, part, the right side of my inequality, which is 12x minus 8. So we have these two lines, and you can graph them, because you know how to do that, and I want to know, okay, at where they intersect at, which is over here at this point, is um, very important for us because what I'm looking at is at what point is the red line less than or equal to the green line because that's what my inequality statement says. So it is at this point right here that, and I'll make it stay up there, there we go, that it's at that point right there that the red line is lower or less than the green line that you see there. And my inequality symbol says, well, all values then that fall to the left of that or fall below that are solutions for these for this particular linear inequality. So that's kind of a visual of what we have going on. Okay next equation that we want to look at uh, is given by this right here. And you'll notice that this equation has a bunch of fractions in it. Well, that's not going to be any big deal because what we're going to do is we're going to clear the equation of its fractions. To do that, we want to notice that we have a denominator of 10 here, a denominator of 5, and a denominator of 10. So the common denominator between these three terms is 10. And that's the number that we're going to multiply both sides by to get rid of, oops, I want it over here, to get rid of these fractions. So on the, on the left-hand side, I'm going to multiply this term by 10 over 1. And you can see that when I multiply that, the tens cancel, and it leaves me with just 3x. Here we're going to multiply 10 over 1 times 1, which gives me 10 still greater than or equal to. Now the right-hand side, what happens when I multiply 1 fifth times 10? Well, 5 divides into 10 two times, so 2 times 1 would just be 2, minus these 10s are going to cancel, gives me just x. Now I want to collect all of my variables up on the left-hand side, and I'm going to do that because that's going to give me all positive variables. So I'm going to add x to this side, giving me 4x, and I'm going to subtract 10 to the right-hand side, and I get negative 8. Now I'm going to divide both sides by a positive 4. Since I'm dividing by a positive number, my sign is going to stay the same, or my symbol will stay the same, and I find out that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So now let's graph that. I say x is greater than negative 2, so I'm looking for negative 2 here. I know x is greater than negative 2, and it is greater than or equal to, so again we have a bracket facing the greater than uh, direction, and my interval notation is going to look like negative 2 comma infinity parentheses, because we're moving off to infinity. Okay, the last one we want to look at is a little bit of a different setup. Notice that I have the variable sandwiched in between two inequality symbols. Well, the way that we handle this is we are going to start from the center and we're going to work our way out. So if I wanted to isolate the variable 4x, I would have to get rid of this, I'd have to add 3. So what I do in this case is I'm going to add 3 to the right hand side, I'm adding 3 to the center to get rid of it, and I add 3 to the left hand side. That got rid of the 3 in the middle and it gave me a 6 bring your symbol down, 4x and 21. Now, or 22. Now what we want to do is we want to divide everything in here by 4. Let me make that clear. 22. Divide everything in here by 4. So divided by 4, divided by 4, and divided by 4. So now, reading from the center, x is greater than or equal to 3 halves, because 6 fourths reduced is 3 halves, and x is less than, what would that be? 11 over 2. So x 
is greater than or equal to 3 halves, but less than 11 halves. So how do we graph that? Well, we're going to put these two numbers on my number line. I have 3 halves and 11 halves. Again, I'm, I do not want decimal values. I want their fractional values. And x is greater than 1 but less than the other. So it's in between these two values. Now let's put the symbols on here. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to, so we need a bracket facing uh, the greater than sign. But x is less than 11 halves, so we have a parenthesis here. And notice how this right here gives me my interval sol uh, solution of 3 halves comma 11 halves with a parenthesis and a bracket. And that's how we're going to solve linear inequalities.